Hello, 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 and welcome to Trends here on the SABC News Channel. My name is Rafil Wemwilwa on Twitter, of course. We are at Twitter, at Trends on SABC. So let me know what's happening in your part of the world, in showbiz and entertainment. And uh, yeah, maybe I might just read one of your tweets later on in the show. Um, yeah, today it's a Saturday. It is 5 to spring o'clock. And of course, everybody is buzzing. The sun is shining. So go out there and make the most of your weekends. And our first story for the day... The Lurie's Creative Week in Durban 2017 drew to a close last Sunday night at the Durban ICC. Over two nights, more than 241 Lurie's were awarded across 22 categories. And kudos to Nathan Reddy of Grid Worldwide, who became the first designer inducted into the Lurie's Hall of Fame. Congrats to him and all the other winners of these prestigious awards. Let's take a look at the highlights. Over 241 Luris were awarded across 22 categories after a hectic two days of judging through more than 3,000 entries that were received. A total of 800 brands were represented by 400 agencies from 18 countries across Africa and the Middle East. I had no preconceived idea coming in. Uh, but once I got done judging the show and meeting all these wonderful people here and understanding the work and seeing the work, uh, I'm walking away wildly impressed. I think it's important to keep the standard really high and um, you know we feel like if it's not at certain standard we should not be giving a goal but certain category it's extremely well done, you know, we, we, we award a Grand Prix for this piece for a restaurant called Marvel. And um, the reason that I love that piece so much because it's a very holistic thinking of design. You know, branding is no longer just for print. And you have to think of how a brand or a logo is translated into, you know, a, a restaurant and a, a signage, a, a print, a digital experience, you know, even interior design. So that particular piece for me, it's a very well thought out design in a holistic 360 degree uh, branding. The chief creative officer and founder of Grid Worldwide, Nathan Reddy, was inducted into the Lurie's Hall of Fame, making him the first designer to receive this honor. The Hall of Fame is like, you know, the, the, I think they've given out six in the history of the Lurie's which is like for people who've accomplished their career. So when I got this call, I was like, listen, I'm just starting off. I hope you give us a award again, okay? But funny enough, it made me, I'm always looking forward, but this made me look back. And when I look back, I go, oh my God, you know, I've been running so fast, it's like a machine. And when I look back, you know, it is quite an accomplishment and I forget to realize how other people see it. The recipe is about working on an awesome brand and having an amazing uh, uh, agency that you're working with and having incredible chemistry that comes together so that you fluidly produce amazing work. Youth has always been uh, important to us. Uh, certainly they are future and next generation of leaders. So the emphasis is on, on inspiring them, recognizing them and rewarding them for the great uh, passion they already have and hopefully uh, that they can carry on their careers and become leaders in our industry. In the student category, four gold Luris were awarded, with students from Vega School winning two gold awards for a campaign to create awareness against human trafficking called Snatched. We generated an, a social media campaign where we had um, clickbait on different social media. So we had, what did we have? <laughs> so we created fake ads that looked like clickbait which had the same sort of catches that you and traffickers use to catch people in real life. So false job opportunities, you know, lies and all sorts of crazy stuff that people get to steal real people. So as soon as you click on a fake link, you go online. And then you're driven to our site and then on our site we have like ways to raise awareness to the, to the like issue. Um, and we also have like merch where we created and did a lookbook for that. Um, and you can buy like the merchandise and then the proceeds go towards the cause. The SANBS Public Service Award was presented for the first time this year to honor work for charitable and non-profit organizations. This year, the awards went to the Western Cape Government's television commercial by Y&R South Africa. We got awarded for Surfshack, which is a outreach in Musenberg. Amazing work that they do. And for the Western Cape Government, uh, drunk driving. And yes, it, hopefully it changes some lives. Owens, I'm going to go to the car, I'm going to go to the car. No, bro. 
Dia dari burus open lah balik dia lagi pipi belas ini beruma. Kali ini berukan si Eko, ini berukan kita tiada. Tiada, 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 now, South Africa's most celebrated photographer and visual artist, the innovative Trevor Sturman, is exhibiting his first solo exhibition titled Home at the Hazard Gallery in Maboneng, downtown Johannesburg. This exhibition brings together photographic works of the Ovi Himba women and Ndebele initiates, highlighting aspects of how the black body has been portrayed in Africa. Home opened last Friday. Take a look. These documentary photographs were taken in Sokopmand, Namibia and Gwandebele. Through this exhibition, the artist attempts to interrogate ideas of home through the exploration of different cultures or traditions that he has experienced of the Ovihimba women and the Ndebele Amasokana initiation ceremony. Ovihimba are indigenous people living in the northern Namibia accustomed to wearing traditional clothing that suit their living environment while their hair could be covered with clay. The exhibition home is an exploration of the human body but more importantly the black human body. It is an investigation of what it means to be at home with yourself and how our bodies are our first homes, yet are the, they are the most unfamiliar spaces that we move in. And with the work, I'd love to celebrate what it means to be black and to, to be free. In the work, you can see it like I work a lot with space and distance and and time. Stirman chose to use women bodies as they are often marginalized in society. I focused on women because I was raised by very strong women and I feel like we should always celebrate women regardless of women's month or or whatever. I feel like women have always been subjectified and marginalized and I feel that um, I'm so deeply inspired by strong women that have a great self-understanding of who they are and I want to celebrate that. The exhibition also features a video installation and the exhibits of the cultural clothing of the Ndebeles. Curator at the Gallery Jonathan tells us why he chose Trevor's work. We met Trevor about a year ago and he took this studio and I was very interested in the photographs he was taking on the side of his big, more fashion-oriented shoots and became fascinated with these details and these, these found stories that he was coming across on these travels. While the exhibition also touches on self-expression and identity, it also reimages aspects of how the black body has been portrayed in Africa. The exhibition will be at the gallery until September the 24th. Absolutely fantastic. Trevor is such a visionary. The Kimberley-born uh, man is doing amazing, amazing things all throughout the continent of Africa. So go out and check out that exhibition. It's at uh, Maboneng until, well, check out, yeah, online and find out when it ends. We are off to an ad break after the book. I have uh, a lady who's penned an amazing book that you really, really should uh, listen to. Uh, this is Trends on the SABC News channel. Come back after this. What guides us? What leads us forward? Is it leaders on a soapbox, spouting rhetoric for the crowd? Is it the actions of our people? Or the voices of our citizens? Your country is guided by the voices of its people. And your broadcaster is dependent on your voice to guide it. Get your copy of the SABC's editorial policy and have your say. Today on Rights and Recourse, we will unpack the new traditional court mode. The idea of the bill is not to overregulate, uh, to basically set the principles. The most important aspect of this bill is that it understands that customary law by its nature is consensual. That I have a right to affiliate, I have a right therefore to opt in, and I have a right to opt out. The opt out provision is, is basically one that you've got to 
respect the court in, in the sense of if you've been summonsed, you've got to tell the, the clerk of the court at least that you're not willing to attend. The challenge that I would like to throw to the Department of Justice it has to ensure, come up with mechanisms of ensuring that people who exercise their right to opt out or to opt in are not in any way victimized. Hashtag rights with Dumila Mates on legal issues every Sunday at 2 o'clock Central African time. It is 6 p.m. Central African time broadcasting live from Johannesburg. This is Primetime News. South Africa said farewell to one of the Ravonia trialists, Uncle Kathy a fearless stalwart. But this man, who was so engaged, so busy, so witty, so funny, so wise, and so incredibly principled. Joseph Shabalala has been honored for his contribution to the South African music industry. A statue in his honor was unveiled during an annual gala dinner in Ladysmith. The shot of the day, however, belonged to American Daniel Berger, who chipped in for an eagle on the par 4 fifth hole. For all your news updates, stay on Primetime News every Saturday and Sunday from 6 p.m. With the, um, the stories of abuse from the other eight, um, but they haven't been ready to, to pursue any angles. They, they've, they've offered their support, uh, they've offered the comfort to the, to, to the eight, and it's been an amazing journey. It feels like your heart actually literally sunk in your shoes. It wasn't a long encounter. Um, uh, I think at the time uh, I froze. The way the criminal justice system deals with sexual violence is problematic. And I don't know, unless there's a fundamental change in many things, the way prosecutors deal with uh, the victim in the matter. For all investigative insights, stay tuned to Special Assignment every Saturday at 17.30. Jumbo Africa, welcome to the newsroom. I'm Elvis Presley. I'm Kendall Mohammed. Let us build our continent brick by brick, stone by stone, until we achieve. Plus, I'd asked the court to review and cancel the contract after adverse findings by both the Auditor General as well as the public protector. Well, Christianity is under attack globally. It has been from the beginning of time. Get all the dominating stories locally and globally on Newsroom every Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. Welcome back. You are tuned to Trends on the SABC News channel with me, Rafil Wemwila. Now, My Life Climax is the title of a book about an incredible journey of self-love and living a fruitful life with or without disability, penned by my, by my guest just now, Emily Oliphant. It is a frank and honest memoir about her life and the tough but positive road she has traveled since the fateful day in March 2003 when a car accident left her paralyzed from the waist down. Over and above such an active life that she lives, she is an advocate of disability rights and awareness and also contributes articles for the Rolling Inspiration magazine, a lifestyle publication that is targeted at individuals, spouses, family, friends and colleagues of people with mobility impairments. Emily, welcome to Trends. Thank you for having I me. I love that. Before I go into you, and there's a lot to talk about with you, that publication is such an important thing because many people don't know how to be around people with mobility impairments so take us through you know the articles that you write and maybe questions and feedback that you get and i love the fact that it's not it's not just family and friends but also colleagues because you know all of us have to coexist the magazine relates it's actually for anybody because um anybody as some 
point in time, you do come across someone with a disability. Yeah. So it, it helps. It, it, it actually, it's got expert. It gives expert advice mm. on, on, on dis disability or impairment in terms of sexuality, in terms of, of assistive devices, in terms of lifestyle, yeah. travel, and so forth. So my, I have the privilege of having the back cover, I mean, yeah. the, the back uh, page, page where, yes. where I write about anything. Okay. So I write... But where do we get this? Because I'm sure I've never come across this at, a ma at magazine stands at shops. You, 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 you can subscribe online, okay. Rolling Inspiration, okay. but they're also available um, um, in print okay. format. Just need to go to uh, Rolling Inspiration and subscribe or inquire with them as to how to get it. Fantastic. Yeah. So you're here looking fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for coming through. Well, I thought it's trend. You, know, I had <laughs> you to better be trendy, <laughs> of course. I exactly. love it. Exactly. But yeah. Emily, you know, your life hasn't all been a bed of roses. You literally have been served lemons and you've made lemonade. Tell us about, you know, who you were before and who you've come to be and this amazing person that sits here before me today, confident and just beaming. You know what I mean? You know... Um, I was, I was giving some awareness um, session yesterday at some corporate um, company and, and I said to them, most of the people that were there, they were young and, and they were relevant into, in terms of I was once like them prior to my disability yeah. and, and, and because you're not exposed to disability, we tend to be very ignorant. So I never knew. In my family, we don't have... Um, anybody who had a, a, a disabling injury or mm. anything. I had an aunt, uh, um, an, a, a daughter of my aunt who had Down syndrome. She died before I could actually get to understand her disability. Was, yeah. um, my uncle, my, one of my uncle, um, Harry, was the first black man, blind man, to okay. operate the switchboard. Right. back in his days but I never got really to because I was very yeah. young at that time and so, one thing when you're young you always think it could never be me you, you don't think that's what I'm you don't think mm. it because you're not exposed to it yeah. and most of the time it's not just out of ignorance it's because maybe you don't have a neighbor or you go to church and you don't see many of them or even if there are people with disabilities in your church you don't sit down to interact exactly or you, there's no that interaction that yeah. takes place yeah. i was i was young approaching my 30th birthday and i mean you know um i just cleared my my credit record was mm. just you know was, was 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 good and then i just bought my first car my career uh, um, path was, was yeah. I was making plans. You know, when you hit 30, mm. that's when you start thinking on another level. Yeah. You know, you, start, you, you stop the fun part of life. You start thinking seriously Long about plan. what you want. Vision. So I, was, I yeah. was getting there. And mm. I think the universe has a very funny way of working because when you reach that age, for me, mm. what I understand is you got to know where you want to go from then on. Yeah. I didn't have a clue. Right. I was just like most people. Um, I worked in any company that I, that I was working with. I, I, I made sure that I, I, I worked myself around different units to understand the company and how it works. But not necessarily to say I'm studying this and then I want to be um, a CEO of this company or I want to be an accountant or I just... Whatever, whatever resonated with me yeah, according to my life at it. the time, so you, you, I studied you were and going I did it. with the flow type yeah, of person. Yeah. Okay. So, so when this happened, yeah. I had to get focused. And I think it, it, it gave me that ability to say, now sit back on this wheelchair mm. and think before you move. But here's the thing, Emily. It obviously wasn't just an automatic thing. You suffered an accident. You were in hospital um, when everything hits you. And you're like, oh, my gosh. My former life, I mean, most of it is done now, you know, from your house to your vehicle. Everything has to be changed, adapted. You have to get used to it. And, you know, people have said you go through almost like stages of grief before you get to a point of acceptance. So what was it for you that, you know, turned that switch? How long did it take? And how did you get yourself to that point where you said, you know what, this is what I've been given. I'm not dead. I still have something to do in this world. And I think I should give credit to um, the way I was brought up, mm. you know. Um, I wouldn't say exactly what is the thing that said, Emily, you've got to do this. But I think, I mean, from when I was in Cretch preschool, yep. um, you know, I, had, I, 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 I took part in, in, in acting. And I was given leadership roles. Yeah. At the age of, what, five, 
you know i was acting from when i was that age and 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 then in, in high school i was sprinting i was the caster semino of the time yeah. it was all about peter's time sure, at that sure, time sure, yeah. and i excelled in everything that i did so yeah. in church i took part i taught sunday school um literacy classes for the illiterate and the elderly so in everything that i involved yeah. myself into there was all. a leadership role that yeah. i had to take part of yeah. so i think so there then, was did then i mean now the fact that you were doing you know advocacy and you know rights awareness and everything for people with disabilities did that almost you know you said you had to get focused and of course it was a natural step to say oh my gosh now all the things that i might have even had stereotypes and prejudged others about i have to now go through those yeah, yeah. and i think it, it, you know automatically because of of the training that you have been prepared for whatever is coming mm. i mean you grow up you do all this this these things in church you are you, you are active at school and so forth yeah i'm aware that it's training you for something else that's going to come of course so when i had an injury i had a choice like everybody else has a choice if you go through a financial issue or you just discover that you have cancer or you have h or whatever i have yeah. a disability so in any situation that i found myself in I, I, at that time i was like okay the reason why I didn't die obviously yeah. because it was a very hectic uh, accident mm. I was I was left there to bleed check how tiny I am mm. you can imagine how much blood I had lost mm. and for me to have survived that yeah. it means you know there's still there's something, something you know Fantastic. so you have a choice to 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 live yeah. and embrace the unknown future yeah or to just give up and 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 and, and die a slow death whilst yeah, you are still alive. Yeah. So, so you I, have a I, thing for fast cars as well. And you you are cars. like an action person. You do I so much that. and outdoors. Yeah. So being on a chair hasn't stopped you from anything. And many people ask me but you had a car accident so you're not scared to drive again? Mm. I must still get to work. I must okay. still go out. I must still go shopping. I yeah. must still travel. Yeah. What must I use? Rely on somebody else. <laughs> love I've it, always love been love independent it. like yeah. from from when I started work 1994 from yeah. 96 I was independent I lived by myself and I, you were doing and it and I've been on my own and and independently so so I think in 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 subconsciously yeah. when this happened God knew good to this one we we'll still one. manage fantastic we we'll still manage Emily, yeah. thank you so very much what's your um, twitter handle or something where people can get a hold of you because i think there might be somebody watching today who's just like you know what the positivity that is just radiating from this woman is something that i need to tap into how can they reach you um on facebook i'm emily oliphant e-m-i-l-i-e -E, yep. oliphant with a f okay um twitter it's emily.oliphant all right and yeah and that's it thank you so it. very much amazing book uh, definitely true as I, I see here one somebody saying you have an indomitable spirit that is without a doubt so very true thank you so very much thank you, you so are much. A, a light of positivity thank you again. my pleasure <laughs> all right that was emily oliphant um yeah get her book it really is one to have on your bookshelves now it is not a rumor anymore in case you didn't get the memo 2017 is the age of the curvy woman and finally fashion labels and even the recent fashion week are catching on and celebrating us all the body positivity movement is huge all over the world and it's about time mainstream media and magazines especially were more diverse to each their own no doubt but one thing is for sure what society has ingrained for decades that we need to be stick thin and size zeros to be gorgeous is anything but true take a look at this image is everything in the superficial world and confidence is the absolute key as real women we know we don't look like the woman on the runway and somehow we associate desirability with that perfect shape in comparison we don't measure up but the point is that we should measure up and every woman in her unique shape should know that she is the definition of beauty the one challenge I think was starting out was me, you know, accepting myself as a plus size woman in South Africa and being vulnerable to the world and say, hey, this is me and this is, you know, this is how I am and I'm not going to change who I am just because um, your definition of beauty isn't a woman with, you know, extra curves, you know, and <laughs> all that. So for me, that was the biggest challenge, you know, accepting, you know, myself as I am and, you know, allowing the public in and, hey, saying, okay, I'm a model, I'm a plus size model and I'm beautiful. <laughs>
Australian brand City Chic, one of the few retailers who design pieces specifically for curvy women, styled these models for us as they make their names in the industry of fashion. The brand believes that the trends are not just for the size 6 and aim to showcase the beauty of big through their designs. Sizes start from 14 and range up to 24, and though the market is niche, expansions are expected in Durban and Cape Town before year-end, with more to follow. Um, our brand is basically for females that can feel good about themselves, even though their body is a bit bigger, but they always they can still look sexy, they can still be trendy, they can still be vibey. Um, even our bras, we go up to a J cup. And I mean, females walk in, we give them a whole experience about how to dress based on their posture. So we don't just dress the customers, we dress them based on their body shape. As our jeans department as well, you have a Harley and we have Asher, which accommodates the actual shapes and the outdoor shapes, which makes the ladies more comfortable, sexy. Coming here because they want to feel good when they look up. So we basically don't sell clothing, we sell products. And we have our fair um, skirts, we have our pleated skirts, we have our stockings, and at the moment we have our <coughs> off shoulders, which is just a very nice and have a lot of attention to detail. And I think we're also the difference is the fabric. You know, having the correct type of fabric, um, construction, the correct type of garment, and fabric also has a very important detail to the body. So I think in the aspect they're doing a great job based on the fact that they're choosing the fabrics that accommodates the silhouettes. Though the runway leaves much to be desired in representing all women, high fashion has come a long way in catering for women with a bigger waistline. A few years ago, the world set their sights on supermodel Ashley Graham, who has been featured on the magazine covers such as Vogue, Sports Illustrated and various other publications, all known for advocating the super thin. Here at home, designer JJ Skuman has been one of the first to set the bar in dressing plus size models and throwing out the stigma associated with it. Now, at this current moment in this century, there is a high demand for plus size models and the industry is starting to embrace us and celebrate us more. So I see myself as my, and my fellow colleague, Lebu Shasha, as an advocate for voluptuous women and also to be a representative for women who are in corporate working hard and who were just not born naturally petite but who are being born are, are very voluptuous and also to say you know what hey lady it's okay just learn to celebrate yourself and love yourself and celebrate us in different unique shapes sizes and heights And now, um, yeah, over the past few weeks, if you haven't uh, seen and, you know, the newspaper articles and social media, there's been a bit of a hype about uh, an upcoming film called Ingle by the Wound. Now, it stars award-winning musician Nakane Toure, who takes the lead in this controversial film uh, from, jo from director John Trengrove and uh, Uruku Media. Now, the film is set to release in cinemas on September 15th, just for a short um, preview, uh, so that it can actually be uh, an Oscar entry for the official Official, um, uh, entries that will be through to for the Oscars for next year. Now it tells the story of young Kolane who journeys the mountains along with other men of his community to um, initiate a group of teenagers into manhood. Now this film has received such a lot of backlash and all from what a two and a half minute trailer? I think you know, if everybody can go and watch this, it's understood, you know, especially, you know, closer people are upset and men, of course, that, you know, they see it as a disgrace and uh, their culture and their tradition being put out onto screen. But this is a film I think that is important. It will necessitate, you know, meaningful and intelligent conversations so that we can move forward. Um, and I mean, Nakane is facing like death threats and crazy, crazy things. I think everyone should just go and watch it and so that you have a bigger picture more than just what's on YouTube currently with is this trailer that you're about to see uh, yeah take a look at this and uh, form your own opinions but always always you know do it intelligently after that
Yeah, <laughs> It does look hectic, right? Yep, that's a, a story of initiation meets homosexuality and everything in between. It's called Ingle by the Wound uh, by director John Trengrove. It will be um, at, uh, I think, Cinema Nouveau for a short release from the 15th of September, but nationwide it opens at cinemas in uh, February 2018. And now in studio, I have a young man who is definitely on his way to a very amazing career in the music scene in South Africa. His name is Sonke. Some of you might know him from a very, very big singing competition that we all love to watch on Sundays. Sonke, take it away.
ask this Irish master whiskey distiller why sometimes whiskey is spelt with an E and sometimes without, he'd say. Hey, fair so good look. It's a whole thing. They're a parking to get off in the whiskey without the E. Uh, yeah, didn't catch that. But if you asked us the difference, we'd tell you that every whiskey from around the world is spelt without the E, except for Irish and American whiskeys. Get 750ml Ballantine's finest blended Scotch whiskey for only $154.99 from Tops at Spa. He's still going, he pops it up, he says to the fan. Easy as that, what a response it is from the Cheetahs, brilliant score. Imran Tahir produced a superb performance with the ball. The Proteus leg spinner put his side in the driving seat, scalping three wickets for just 18 runs. Gifton Gope is flying toward third and he is there with a trip, trip. Triple, his first in the big leagues. It is a Ferrari front row lockout. Unless Hamilton can get on pole and he can't. Ferrari for the first time since France in 2008 have locked out the front row. For all your sports news, keep it locked to Sports Live every Saturday and Sunday from 2030. Welcome back, you are still watching Trends and that was a beautiful performance you heard before the break from Songke. Now the 2017 Mushito Music Conference and Exhibition is invading the art district of Newtown. The theme for this year's conference is celebrating the rhythms of the ancients. The program includes intriguing conference topics, networking sessions, music demo presentations and of course a few concerts. Now Mushito promises to live up to its brand uh, of being Africa's premier music market and event show. I am now joined by Songke who will be performing at the showcase night of Mushito on the 8th of September. He is here to tell us about this amazing music conference and his efforts in preserving the ancient rhythms and cultures in our music. I'm also joined by director of Mushito, Sina Gwebile. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank you so much for having us. So, okay, I'm going to start with you, you know. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so you've been busy. I've been busy. And one thing I think that's making you even more determined is you refuse to be that guy that everybody just remembers you, you know, from that other show you know, on that you know, other channel. I try, I try, <laughs> yeah, I try. Yeah. Um, I've been busy. I've been, I've been up and down. Yeah. And maybe take a break, Nyana, and then sure. um, work again. But the fantastic thing and the odd thing maybe about Idols that I will mention is it's very odd. We've had Amanda Black here. We've yeah. had, you know, other, we've had Matema here. We've got you here. There's something to be said about the people who make it to the top 10 and not the winner. Because those people, I don't know who <laughs> will break that trend. You know, no, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about whoever has won, you know, the top right, idol. Right. Um, but for some reason, the top five, the top 10, their drive after that competition is absolutely amazing. And they're the ones who come and they take on the music industry True. by storm. True. Yeah. So tell us about that and just the launch pad that it did for your career, meeting people who were there, teaching you the things that taught you to be where you are now. Well, I made it to top three and I didn't know what was coming. Mm. And here I am on trends. Yeah. Uh, it changed my life in a way that I got noticed by the people in the industry, yeah. the, big the producers, necessary people. you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it changed my life. I perform more and it, it, did, it, it teaches you how to be a brand. It teaches yeah. you how to, um, it gives you the, the taste of your life mm. when you're in the industry full time, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's, they're building you basically. Exactly. They're launching you. And so that was season nine when you were... Season nine, season yeah, nine. 2013. Okay, yeah. 2013. Yeah. Wow. So where's your native? And who have you been working with since then? Yo, I've worked with a lot of people. Uh, I've worked with Lerato Manaka. And I can't... Who's producing your sound, so? Oh, uh, the single is produced by Melissa Msimango. Okay. All the way from Val. Okay. I was working with Mshosa then. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, but now I'm Mshosa, all Mshosa. alone. Yeah, Mshosa Posa. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. But now I'm all <laughs> alone. Just to make and, sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I'm all alone. I'm pushing by myself. Fantastic. Yeah. Sina, welcome to Trends. Let's bring you into the conversation. Thank and Mushito is taking place between the 6th and the 9th of September. Am I correct? Yes. And it's a big program. Every year there's a lot happening. And, you know, for different people, whether it's the business side, whether it's the artistic side, whether it's, you know, a networking thing. So tell us what people can expect and all about this year's amazing theme. Uh, this year the theme is uh, Rhythms of the Ancients. Mm. Uh, with that theme we are looking at the sounds that actually bring renounce to the music and the sounds that we have today, mm. such as gong, hip hop and jazz. So all those elements we are trying to highlight them throughout Mushito. Yep. And at this year's Mushito we've got about 16 international music markets mm. who will be in Johannesburg from the 6th until the 9th of September. That's a lot, like there's no sleep, like that means every <laughs> single hour of the day there's something happening. Uh, yes, we have to showcase our country and yeah. we have to showcase the talent in sure, South Africa. Sure. So with Mushito, we've got two-day conferencing, uh, which happens on the 7th and the 8th, with topics such as decolonizing the airwaves, uh, meet the international markets. This is a panel of mm. uh, these 16 music markets, right. which will be giving short uh, presentations on what they do on their platforms. Sure, sure. I don't know who you know. all the panelists are. Of course, there's a lot, but mm. I know the chairperson this year is Dr. Sipos Tole, and so he brings a whole lot of wealth, you know, coming with his journey, his career, Native Rhythm Records, mm. you know, it's a lot. And so who are some of the other panelists who, you know, people like Sonke should, you know, really be there and listen to when it comes to how to brand themselves and create, you know, a, a, a product from their talent, from their business to take themselves, you know, into history in South Africa? Okay, um, on the topic Rhythms of the Ancients, uh, which will happen on the 7th of September, mm. we've got Dr. Silo Halan. Uh, he'll also be performing at our opening concert on the 6th of September. Nice. So from those kind of influential um, experts in the music industry, mm. such as Rafael Benza, who will yeah. be also on one of the panels. Uh, we've also got um, uh, Um Jakes also on okay. one of the panels. That's Umjali Fatebe? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you call him Um Jakes because <laughs> Sorry. you know him, but you know, our viewers don't know Um Jakes. <laughs> Sorry you know? about that, yeah, yes. Yeah, esteemed, amazing, amazing producer who's responsible for so many careers so in South Africa as well. So he's sitting on a very exciting topic yeah. on the art of the hustle, how to bank nice. that award. Nice Since one. he's helped a lot of artists yeah. to actually get awards. Okay. Um, and then we've got uh, companies such as MTV, um, uh, you can't sorry, Risa, them before you sorry. mention us. Sa, Sina. <laughs> but it's all the companies that yeah, do yeah. awards that will be sitting on the panel Fantastic. and actually giving information how to actually get nominated to be right, right. an award winner or a nominee. Wow, so it's a lot. Have you been a part of you know the Mashita Conference for many years before now? Uh, yes, I've been with Moshito for the past five years. Okay, so you've uh, seen it grow from strength to strength. Yes, I have. That is absolutely fantastic. Songe, I mean, where to from here? What's the plan? Well, uh, the plan is for me to hustle even more. Yeah. Um, get myself out there, get my music out there, and just chill, man. Take it as it is. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Your Twitter handle and where do people get a hold of where you'll be performing next? Oh, other yes. than Mushito? Um, I'm going to be doing a radio tour in Cape Town. Okay, what's your 12th. Twitter handle? Where can people get all that information uh, online? Sonkaneta on Twitter. Sonkaneta. Uh, yes, Sonkaneta. S-O-N-K-N-A-T-O-R. Sonkaneta. Okay. I need to find. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. Mako Sonke, Butelezi. Ma Makosonge Mazibu. Mazibu. Yeah. Okay, there yeah. we go, but he goes by the name Sonke. Thank Sonke. you so very much for coming through. Thank you through. so much for Sina, nice. thank you so very much. Yeah, that's uh, the Mushito Music Conference happening uh, this year in Newtown, taking place from the 6th to the 9th of September. So, yeah, um, in our next story now, a uh, Zimbabwean living musical legend and human rights activist and also UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, Oliver Tuku Tukuzi brought up his uh, distinctive Tuku music style up close and personal at the Lyric Theatre this past Thursday. The music legend uh, personally handpicked artists he has groomed along his music career to take to the stage with him in an intimate evening, intimate evening where the best of his music was played. We were there. Take a look at the highlights. One of the most globally recognized cultural icons from our continent, Oliver Mtuguzi, began making music in the late 1970s and has 65 albums under his belt. This intimate evening is definitely one for the books. Baseline um, is a 23-year-old brand. It's actually our birthday tomorrow. 
we're 23 years old. Um, and what it is, is um, basically we started off as a jazz club, we moved to Newtown, became a concert venue, and now we're live, so we, we can, we, we everywhere. Oliver Mutakudzi is probably, arguably the biggest act in Africa, okay? He has kept himself relevant for 40 years, and he's released 65 albums. I don't know where you can find more heritage than that. Well, like I always say, I mean, I expect um, dynamite. I'll bring the songs, and my audience makes a show out of the songs, and together it's dynamite. He has a distinctive sound that's recognized around the globe as Tuku music. Well, I was the last person to know that the music is Tuku music because I didn't label the music Tuku music. My fans did. And I had to find out why. Uh, especially in Zimbabwe, they thought uh, they can't place it, my music like Mbira music or traditional or Katuku. There's, there's everything in one which is kind of true because I fuse a, a lot of different African styles. So they decided to call it after my name. So it's just to music. This musical legend offers music and a diversity of art forms in an academy he spearheads to build talent. I have what I call Pakarepai Art Center, where I call all these youngsters, elderly people who, are, who feel they have something to do, they can do something. And um, I facilitate them to showcase whatever they can do. And from there, I always have youngsters who play my music perfectly. So it's a matter of just giving them a chance. It's part of the program where we, I, I, I travel with these youngsters just to show them what happens in showbiz. He is a doctorate from two universities and is a recipient of some of the most prestigious human rights awards, such as the International Council for Africana Womanism Award, for his role in the upliftment of African women through his music. What we call education, at times it's not education at all. Uh, we are just collecting alien information into our heads, which got nothing to do with us. I think we have to go back and realize who we are. Our traditional laws and so on meant well until the greedy man came along to abuse the woman. Uh, it's, 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 we all come out of a, of a woman. If you need a wife, there's to be a woman. If you need a daughter, it's a woman. And all these people have a lot to do with a man's life. And um, as men, I think we need to go back and think about when you see a woman, what do you see? You see your mother. So let's all respect our women and... Um, and I think we'll have a better world here. Yeah. Nice one indeed. Now, in light of celebrating the rich heritage of our continent, the, the exhibition of new work by Zimbabwean artist Kudzanai Shurai, titled We Live in Silence, opened on Thursday at the Goodman Gallery in Johannesburg and definitely caught our attention. This is the first part of the series that is spread across two sites, with part two of the show opening at Constitution Hill on September 9th. Now, the artist will screen four new films from the works shown at the Goodman Gallery, and we were there to check out the opening of this dual location series. Take a look. We Live in Silence, an exhibition by Zimbabwean artist Kudzanai Chirai. This showcase marks the final installment of a three-part series that began in 2011. A lot of it has to do with um, how we experience colonial time, how we experience post-apartheid or post-colonial um, post time. And like, how do we reflect upon all of those experiences and how do we catalog, catalog them and interpret them so a lot of material is kind of drawn from like archives because archives are interesting 
in, in the sense that they are confessions. They are really interesting confessions to look at when you look at the documents, the texts, the films, the audio material in, in archives. So I see those as confessions. These theatrical and politically charged works will be presented through a dual location format. It started a couple of years ago, one, more like one exhibition where I'd started to block off a street and then the work, paintings and photographs were inside a building. And then the video and soundtrack were performed live on, on the street. So I thought it was like an interesting, not only to separate, but then it's an entirely different experience. It's a space like I was familiar with. I walked those same streets um, every day with my friends. And I thought it would be interesting in terms of putting up work there, almost like a, a visual intervention, like to project in the middle of the street, to have a soundtrack of a video played in the middle of the street and you'd watch that. So I've, so from there I always figured, well, I think it would be always interesting to use an offside space. So the photos reflect one part, a chapter in the film, another, other photographs reflect the second chapter or third chapter. So it's essentially one, the photographs in, in the gallery are one <laughs> narrative essentially. It's more or less kind of the same um, aesthetic um, in the films. Because we tried, we tried to match them so um, they look the same, so it's very similar. The second part of this exhibition will open at the Constitution Hill on the 9th of September. These artworks are currently being showcased at the Goodman Gallery. Now we're off to an ad break. Uh, after this, it's the last few minutes of Trends. What guides us? What leads us forward? Is it the advice of our elders? Is it the actions of our people? Or the voices of our citizens? Your country is guided by the voices of its people. And your broadcaster is dependent on your voice to guide it. Get your copy of the SABC's editorial policy and have your say. So the last stretch of trends on this Saturday afternoon, Jane Mpo, a free state artist who has experienced heart-wrenching ordeals in her life, has written and directed a theatre production called Psalm 69. The one-woman production is a theatrical version of Mpolo's life, where she was sexually abused at a young age and lost her parents to HIV AIDS. It started off as a journey of self-healing and later morphed into a much sought after theater production. Psalm 69, a one-woman production, takes the audience through a journey of hardships experienced by Jane, the playwright. At the age of 28, she has had her fair share of heartbreaking ordeals. When she was 13, Jane was sexually violated. I never knew it was rape until I was in high school. Because we were never taught about such from home or school. Like, I, I, I only knew that it didn't feel right, but I didn't know the term for it was rape. Jane's ordeal did not end with the rape. In 2006, she lost her parents and her entire family was in denial about the cause of death and thus could not find immediate closure. I think I also fell into the whole being in denial trap. Um, and I also felt uncomfortable and the stigma around the whole thing. So yeah, my mom and dad passed away because of HIV and AIDS. Um, yeah, we had to have two funerals two weeks in a row. 
Judging by the flow of this production, it is clear that like a phoenix, Jane rose from metaphorical ashes with a renewed youth to live another cycle. Psalm 69 has already been to the State Theatre. It was a hit at the Youth Experience Festival in June. The play will be shown at the Olive Tree International Women's Festival in October. It's a very, it's a very gripping, strong, painful, beautiful story at the same time. So I think that is very complex for a, di for a director. So I think it's actually an honor to have her, who is the writer, fill me in. Because what normally directors have to deal with is they have to take a text and they don't have the writer with them at hand. What I've been through in that production made me realize, sorry, there's so many people, you cannot just judge a book by its cover. That's what people say. You know, you would say, okay, maybe she's got it all, what, 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 but you don't know that person at all. So I think what we've been through together, it's been one of the things that made me open, I mean, that, that opened my eyes to actually see the good in life more and more. Armed with a BA degree in drama and theatre arts, Jane is a fully rounded artist, a model, author, scriptwriter, and director. I have been meaning to ask you as well can you even understand English? It's amazing. It actually started with me writing the books. I wrote the first book, Jane Polo's Exclusives, just for me, you know, for my own sake, for my own sanity, for. Yeah, for my therapy. And then somebody read it and they like, but you'll be selfish if you're gonna keep this to yourself. So many people out there are giving up and they haven't even gone through half of what you've gone through. Share it with the world. It's a bittersweet moment. Jane, a devout Christian, has used her ordeal to inspire silent voices. As Psalm 69 verse 15 states, Rest me from the mire and do not let me sink. Jane says women often lack the guts to talk. Congratulations to Jane for putting out her life and herself like that. Uh, yeah, and with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Trends on the SABC News Channel. Thank you so very much to all my guests today. We had Sonke, we had Mushito representative. We also had uh, Emily Oliphant who was here showing us indeed, uh, as Scott Hamilton once said, that the only disability in life is a bad attitude because she is living her best life. And this after being, uh, yeah, in a car accident that left her paralyzed from the waist down. Until Next week, from me, Rafil Wemwilwa, it is a goodbye. Enjoy your weekends.